Hi, welcome to How To Repair. In this video, I'm going to be stripping a machine down to show you how to change the individual components. This is a WMUD942 hotpoint, but the exact model number is written in this door and it is slightly different. It's a WMXTF942PUK. Now, this machine is in perfect working condition apart from the bearings in the drum have collapsed. And on this occasion, it's not economic to repair because even if I repaired the machine, the cabinet is not in great condition. There's rust all round the edges. The previous owner never looked after it and therefore it's uneconomical to, for me to repair the machine and then sell the machine. So I'm going to scrap this machine and use all the good components like the printed circuit board, motor, water valves, etc. and put them onto our second-hand eBay site. And we also sell all the common running parts for this machine, which is like the pump, carbon brushes, door seal, belt, water valves, and other bits and pieces. Um, this video will be about 30 minutes long. I will show you how to change each individual component as you're seeing in the diagram that is coming up on the screen. And what we'll do is I will change or take the parts off the machine as you would if you had to replace them. And then of course, you'll just have to use uh, your common knowledge to replace the component once you've taken the part off. It's pretty easy. And I'll also talk you through all the common faults with this machine as I'm going along. Okay, first thing I'm doing is going round the back of the machine and we're going to remove the lid on the machine. Two screws. Sometimes they need a slight hit. That one was a very sticky lid. And the lid comes off. Now we've got access to the top and bottom of the machine. The first thing people have a problem with is the door seal. Uh, so that's a straightforward change. You have got a spring either should be at the bottom on this machine, but for some reason someone has put it at the top. And you just get a, a small screwdriver underneath the spring. Remove the outer band, that's in good condition. So I can put that onto the site. Then we'll peel off the door seal. And this one has got the stretchy band, so I can actually remove the door seal from the inside. Putting your hand here under the door seal, pushing upwards, then pulling it down towards you, you are able to remove the door seal. And you should be able to fit the new door seal onto the machine straight forward. So this door seal is in excellent condition, and also the spring. This all can be recycled. The next thing we need to do is to remove the facial panel. This will then either give us to access to this front panel and also the plinth at the bottom. Okay, to remove the fascia panel, we need to remove the soap drawer. Now, these slide in, and it's a common item to break because you end up with corrosion on the pin. So just holding the panel, it will slide away. But do make sure you hold that, then you can replace your soap drawer. Behind here are two screws. Sometimes these corrode, and if you're in a hard water area, you want to make sure that the jets inside do not block. You've got two water valves on this machine uh, and they both supply the soap drawer. Once those two screws are out, you've got a couple of screws on the top that remove the metal bar. This bar can come away. That can go in my scrap metal bin. And then underneath here, you will find a couple of plastic catches that you need to release, which I will show you in a second. One catch there, one catch there. 
This facial panel is all in good condition and the printed circuit board is also perfectly working so I will sell that as a complete unit. This is not a panel that comes off the front of the machine. There are no screws at the top. This means that this is welded. So what we'll do next is I will show you how to remove the pump. Okay, to remove the pump, first you need to take off the kick strip. Using a small screwdriver, there are three points that you need to touch and the plinth will come away. And you can see the corrosion here, why it's not worth d doing this. Uh, the plinth is in reasonable condition, so I will actually put that on the eBay site as well. Here is the pump, and there is two screws. Now, you would normally undo these screws, then lean the machine backwards, or you can access the pump from the rear of the machine by putting your hand in and going through the side. So we're going to lean the machine over, Okay, I've tilted the machine over, Drop the pump down. We can disconnect the wiring. And I know this pump is in perfect working order, although there's a little bit of corrosion on that. Take the plug out. And now we need to remove the two hoses. Now, common faults that can occur with the machine not emptying the water is the pump may have uh, burnt out. The filter may be blocked. The sump hose, which is at the bottom here, can clog, which I'll show you in a minute. But I have done previous videos on how to find blockages on washing machines. So these clips just press down. And then I can back these off. I might get a bit of water, which I did, all over me. Just tip that out on the floor. I'll clean it up in a minute. And here is the pump. And I can see there's a bit of debris in there. Yeah, there was a nail. So that doesn't help leaving stuff in pockets. So we have the pump there. Now while we've got the machine over, if you needed to access the uh, hose here, we need a Phillips screwdriver or a 7mm socket to undo the bolt on the bottom. Right, uh, I'm using a 7mm uh, socket on this to remove this. Nope, oh, doing it the wrong way. All you need to do is loosen it right off. And then this will come away. Now, whenever checking these, you need to take the clip off. And there is actually a good size tennis ball, or not tennis ball, but a bit bigger than a golf ball, inside. This all needs to be cleaned up if you have problems with your machine not emptying. Sometimes if the machine is not used for a long period of time this ball can stick to the rubber. But I will clean all that up and this is a good hose so that can be sold as well. Now we've got the suspension legs at the bottom which we won't do yet. What I'm going to do next is show you how to remove the motor and the printed circuit board. But first thing we need to do is turn the machine round for this. Okay, to gain access to the printed circuit board and the motor, we need to remove the back panel. panel then drops away. Here is the belt for the washing machine. To remove the belt or if you need to replace the belt, straightforward and simple. It comes towards you to come off and let it rotate. If you need to put it back on, the simplest way is to put it onto the spline of the motor, 
put the belt halfway round and then carefully rotating and then make sure it lines up on the actual motor and also in the centre of the pulley at the top. This belt is in good condition so there's no point in wasting that. Now when washing machine bearings go the heater can get damaged so I need to check the heater with the mega and also for any visible damage but first I'm going to remove the motor. The motor has got a plug and the plug just needs to be pulled out. We then have two 10 mil bolts I believe I'm using a socket with an extension. You could use a spanner, but be careful of these edges. The amount of times I have cut myself with these machines because the steel is now so thin. You'll have to excuse me sweating, but it's a lovely warm day. We're nearly 30 degrees in Britain, which is a rarity. Okay, now we have the motor. Now sometimes the motor sticks onto the lugs. And you may need to prise it using a screwdriver. I'm going to put my hand underneath and the motor will slide out and I can drop it down. This motor is in perfect condition. It is a three phase motor, meaning it does not have carbon brushes. So this motor is controlled via the circuit board which changes it to three phase and controls the motor in this way. So we know the motor is good and we know the circuit board is good. These motors can cost in excess of £200 and it's a shame to let it go to waste where someone can benefit from a motor for a very small amount. Next we have the circuit board. Now the circuit board is behind here and there is a security key which I believe is a T20 and that just undoes. Then you have the inspection hatch. This is used for programming the machine. This comes off. Now I'm able to lift the circuit board up. Oh no, my apologies. There are two on this model of machine. Now the circuit board can come up and the circuit board can come out. Now I will need to undo the wiring harness. I might be able to squeeze it out for you. Yes I can. And that is the circuit board. Now rather than unplugging the circuit board I'm going to cut the wiring. This is to help the next person who's buying the uh, circuit board so he can identify the correct plugs for this to go on. So I'm just going to use my cutters and cut this off and cut it close. Because all the copper wire can be recycled. And there we have a good pre-programmed circuit board. You must remember if you are buying new the circuit boards need to be programmed. If you're buying second hand, you need to make sure that you're buying the circuit board only for the model that this circuit board came off. The reason for this is they are pre-programmed and people in the UK would not have the equipment personally, only engineers will have the equipment to program the circuit boards. So that is a perfect circuit board for this model of machine, not what is written on the facial panel, which I showed you earlier, which was slightly different. This is a WM XTF 942P UK. This is only programmed for that machine. Right, while we're at the back here, we're going to remove the heater and I'll bring the camera closer in for you. 
Okay, I'm just going to cut these cable ties to get the wiring out of the way. And I'm going to pull off the two wires. And this in the middle is called the NTC sensor. This is what controls the temperature. And then I'll pull the earth off. And that looks like it's an 8mm socket. And what you need to be aware of when changing heaters on any washing machine, sometimes, no, that's a 7mm, sorry, I stand corrected. Uh, sometimes the heater, well that's 7, oh that was 9, my apologies. I was correct the first time round, that is an 8mm. What you do is loosen this off all the way to the end of the threads, but do not come off the threads, as you can see here. Then you can put on and give it a push in. That releases the pressure off the seal. Now, I normally use a flat blade screwdriver, but I also have a special tool with a hook and I'm able to go underneath this and prise it backwards. But I will tell you now, these heaters, if they've been in there a long time, can be very difficult to get out. And this one does not look, oh no, this one came out okay. Now I'm inspecting this heater for any damage and the drum, when the bearings on a washing machine collapse, the drum drops and it can damage the actual heating element. There is no signs here at all that the drum has touched the heating element. Uh, the NTC sensor has got a Pacific value at a certain temperature, uh, but I'm not going into that on this video. I have done other videos on how to test elements. Anyway, I will test that element thoroughly before selling it. Now, a lot of people who need to remove the pulley wheel at the back of the machine can hurt themselves because they use a torque. Now, this torque is a torque 40, and that goes into there, and you need to undo it. Now, the way you would normally do that is you would lock the wheel, then put the torque in, and put pressure on to undo it. Now, I'm not going to kid you, you can hurt yourself because a lot of these torques snap and the pressure that is on this torque is excess. In other words, there's a lot of pounds per square inch. So the easiest way I find for anyone to undo these is I put a screwdriver in to lock it in place and that's not really suited. I'll use the back, no, I'll use this screwdriver, put that in to lock it. Then what I do is I use a chisel, put it on the edge, give it a few taps, and you will damage the thread slightly, but it's loosened it. Now, I should be able to undo this. Take this off. It hasn't damaged it in any way that it's not usable. And now we can actually get access to the pulley. And this will need a little bit of prising to get off. very very sticky to get off there's not many reasons why you would want to get this off because as you will see later in the video you can't change the bearings on these machines which I think is a disgrace from all manufacturers uh, and you can't get the pulley wheel off but just by doing this and loosening it we have a pulley wheel and that could save someone's life because they only normally sell that with the drum Sometimes it does come separately. 
So now we've got all the components off the bottom of the machine. We need to bring the machine down to floor level to take off the other components and we'll go through them in a second. Okay, we've got the machine down on the floor and the first thing we're going to remove is the door because to take the drum out of the machine we need to remove the door. The door is straightforward and simple. 7mm socket is required or you could use a spanner and that just undoes and the door comes off. That door is in good condition, a couple of marks but it will all clean up and that will help someone. Doors predominantly go if you have children. Children love to hang on doors and they always break the plastic in the hinges. Next we'll remove the door lock. The door lock is straightforward. On this one there are no screws, it has two plastic lugs. So you need to press the plastic lug on top and bottom while sliding it in that direction, that way. Then turn the lock to a 45 degree angle and it will pull out. These have been common problems over the years for Hotpoint. It is an inherent problem where they had a design flaw for a period of time. They have rectified it. Since Whirlpool have taken over the company, they have rectified the problem. This door lock is in good condition and the harness just pulls away. And you have three terminals on here, five, four and three, which are in use. And those are brown, brown, red on this model of machine. This is the emergency pull cord and this is designed if the machine is stuck full of water uh, or the machine will not open. This cord can be pulled and the door lock will release. And this comes out at the bottom here. So when inserting a new door lock, do make sure that you get the tab going all the way through the bottom panel. Now we need to remove the pressure switch. This is at the top of the machine. Now, if you're not careful when removing these, you will break the plastic lugs. So first thing I'm going to do is take the pipe off the bottom of the machine. This pipe runs to the collection bowl at the bottom. You should be able to blow through it. This pressure from the water filling in the machine pressurizes the air in this tube, which activates the sensor to turn off the water supply at the water valves. Now to get these out, they are quite tricky. You need a really small thin screwdriver and just press each side to press these two lugs down and then it will come away. Then we have the wiring harness at the back and we have a perfectly good pressure switch. Next, we'll just inspect the mains lead and plug as this is all part of the suppressor or filter. Now this is designed to take away interference with other electrical items that you may have in the house. In the old days, if filters weren't fitted, they would interfere with the radio signal and things like this. They are an item which can blow. Now to remove these, once you've undone the screw, you need to slide them upwards, tilt it back, take it out of the machine and then we can remove the wiring. Just a little bit sticky on these and we need to remove the earth and there we have a good filter with the cable so that can be used on someone's machine. Right, the next thing we're going to remove is the soap box and the water valves. It is possible to remove the water valves without taking the soap box off, but I will show you that in a minute. So the first thing you need to do is undo two screws. One here and one above the water valve. On some occasions there are two screws. Once these are undone, the soap box is loose, but we'll just remove the wiring, press down the lugs and pull the wiring off. Make sure if you are replacing a water valve that you actually take these off correctly because they may go on the wrong way round. They are colour coded and they should have location teeth lugs in here. This one has got one, two, three 
and that one has only got one two space then three so they wouldn't go in the wrong way but it's always best to take a photograph when replacing these then we need to take off the soap hose and I'm going to change the camera angle for this okay the soap box is loose you will see that the soap hose is attached to the soap box just by looping this band over once this band is off they can be a little sticky to get off so just pull it down sometimes you can use a flat blade screwdriver but do be careful of the sharp edges that now can come away now if you need to replace the water valve there is two screws on the top here and you undo these two screws I'm doing this out of the machine so you can actually see and this water valve is in perfectly good condition there are two rubber grommets which are on the top and sometimes these can come off like that and that is a complete water valve and soap box the hose for the machine can now be pressed and this comes off when fitting new soap box uh, hoses sometimes it's an idea to use D-ball glue on the actual surface when fitting a new one this stops anything weeping down the front uh, but that's a perfectly good hose and that can be reused once it's being cleaned right the last thing we need to do is remove the drum from the washing machine and this is quite a heavy item but I will bring the camera away and then I will show you how this comes out okay the first thing you will need to do is lean the machine backwards and there are two bolts uh, sorry nuts at the bottom of the machine these come off keep them safe because you will need to reuse them if you are replacing a drum I'm just going to hold the drum there to support it I'm going to tuck that hose in out of the way so it doesn't get damaged because that's a good hose then bring the machine down the next thing that needs to be removed is the steel retention bar at the top these are torque 20s sometimes they use Phillips screws other times they may use nuts as well now once this is off if you are lifting the drum out by hand uh, which I won't be because I'm too old to mess around with doing that anymore you need to remove the concrete block off the top to lighten the machine this concrete block is held on with three screws and they are 10 mil sockets I'm using my torque for speed once that is away the concrete block will come off now there's two springs on either side if you are replacing a drum do take note of where the spring is lining up on the plastic insert these are at the front of the machine and then the spring on the left hand side is facing backwards and the spring on the right hand side is facing forwards and they are on the forward lugs on the drum which is very important I'll show you that close up now as I was saying forward location here not the back location this is designed so it can be used on different type of machines with seven kilo drums or eight kilo or ten kilo whatever and you'll notice that there is two connections on the drum forward and backwards written on the side of the drum is 62 and 52 I believe that relates to the literage of the drum so this is on the 62 and it's the forward now at this point you would normally have two people to lift and as I work on my own uh, I have the right toys for the job so I basically have a pulley system 
that comes down and I normally put these onto one on either side after I put the bolts in or oh, a matter of fact I can show you a different way of doing this I don't need to use it on this drum because they have got the pickup points and this harness I made years ago that just slots in there that one slots in there then take some weight off it I can remove the spring for that side it's to go up a little bit more and there we have two good springs off the machine and to remove the whole drum make sure you take all the wiring off okay I'll just quickly do this for you here's the suspension leg as you can see there is a clip which needs to be pressed in press that in push it backwards slightly push the pin through and we have the suspension leg and that is a good suspension leg there's a little bit of corrosion on there but that is still in very good condition rotate this round do the other side again we need to rotate this round till we find the pin there's the pin press the pin in and push it towards me always difficult doing this on camera and there we have two good suspension legs and I'll just show you how the forward concrete block comes off there are three torque screws and these should be a little bit looser than the torque screw that was on the pulley wheel at the back so these should come undone by hand these are torque 40s but I'm not going to mess around with that I'm going to use the normal gun battery's a little low keeping my finger on that so the concrete block doesn't drop and then the concrete block comes off these concrete blocks I take off the machine I don't sell because they're too expensive to post uh, and I do use them on building projects that I have around the place that is pretty much everything on the drum there's one last item that I can show you if I drop the drum down is to how to change the drum paddles uh, sometimes these get damaged when people are washing trainers and other items so this is pretty straightforward and I'll just drop the drum down so I can show you that okay the last two things to discuss on this machine is here is the pressure bowl on earlier machines that used to be an item you could remove uh, on the modern machines it's pre-built into the drum and basically this hose comes off you need to make sure that this is clear and there is nothing blocking it and you should be able to blow through this this area here becomes a larger volume when it compresses and fills with water this is what pressurizes the pipe that sends it to the pressure switch which then tells the machine or the program what level the water is and lastly we have the drum paddles and I'll just use a torch on this and try and show it you easily luckily it's magnetic inside here we have three paddles uh, now these paddles have got holes and if you count on this model of machine it's the sixth hole you, you need to worry about so you count from the front going backwards one two three four five six put your plunger in there and you should feel a tab you've got it and that presses this tab down 
and when you're fitting a new paddle you need to bend it back up like that and then you'll be able to slide the new paddle in and it will lock into place and I'll just do all these for you because these paddles are in good condition and there we have three good paddles and this drum now is going to be used for either a fire pit or a um, garden pot of some type or maybe a line holder which you've seen in my other videos and there you go I've got a basket full of parts now to list uh, to save other people money in the future the drum is completely knackered as I said you when you spin it you can hear how bad the bearings were and because the manufacturer disgracefully builds in obsolescence to these machines this machine had to be scrapped for the sake of a 20 pound set of bearings in the old days but there you go i hope you found this video helpful remember to subscribe to the channel as that's what keeps us going and able to make these videos for you and if we really helped you could always click on the bipolar beer page and it will always be appreciated thanks very much indeed for watching